This video is going to be a super, super short one. I just wanted to show you how I record my screen for my tutorials, for my course, for pretty much everything I do when I'm using my MacBook screen to show you something inside of a video. So when I'm recording my tutorials in DaVinci Resolve, this is the software that I'm using. And I'm currently using it to record my screen as well, but it's called ScreenFlick and this is their website. This is not sponsored or anything. I did actually reach out to them to see if they wanted to work together. They never got back to me, but this is the software I found when I was searching around. And the reason I found the software in the beginning was that I can change my capture rate, as you can see on the picture here on their website. And that was pretty important for me because I wanted to be able to capture my screen in 30 frames per second so it matches my timeline. And this was something I couldn't do with QuickTime. I don't know if they fixed that ever since. It's something I got a few years back and it's not the most expensive software, so I think it's worth it. Essentially, it allows me to choose the area in which I'm recording. And since my screen is not 19 by 16, usually I set that aspect ratio and then I resize the window of my that means resolve as well to something like this. And then I record from up here to down here to make sure that I have the entire screen captured, which gives me a little bit less real estate to work around with, but it gives you the full screen experience when you're seeing it on YouTube. Now, the cool thing about it is that you can record the system audio. So if you're playing music or something through DaVinci or anything else, it'll record that as well. The microphone, this by the way, the system audio also works for Zoom calls or meetings online. If you wanna record those, which I do for my one-on-one -on -one sessions, with people, then I record both the system audio and my microphone, which is usually my AirPods that I have plugged in. And then I get the whole audio, both what they're saying and what I'm saying along with the screen so they can rewatch it back afterwards. Then you can record the camera of your screen as well, or if you're computer, MacBook, whatever you have. I don't use that for anything, but the cool thing is also that it captures your mouse clicks and your key presses. So you can decide afterwards, after you record it, if you wanna keep that or not. Um, so that's something that's pretty cool. You can do some hiding features down here. And this is the whole layout that you have to work with when you are recording your screen before you start recording. And then when you hit record, you can choose the area in which you want the screen to be captured. And that is pretty much all there is. Then afterwards you have a other another section, the export section here. I don't think we can change to that. I don't know if they have it down here, but essentially it allows you to, it looks something like this. It allows you to both play back and export the, the parts that you want, but it also allows you to change some settings and things in terms of how you want to export it. They have a lot of different exporting settings. Here you can see for YouTube, Vimeo, ProRes. I usually use web and devices and then something like what the settings are set here actually, just to keep it simple and to have something good to work with inside of the Vince Resolve when I'm using it in my timeline without the file sizes getting too big. I used to do it in ProRes, which took up too much space. So this is the way that I'm doing it. And you can see that you have different options here of what you want to export. And you can also change things up in different places. I don't know exactly where, but in terms of what you want to showcase. This is the website. I'll leave a link down below if you want to see how it works for yourself. I said they're not sponsored or anything. I just, this is the software that I use. So I thought I wanted to show you how I use it, or at least show the software for those of you who had questions, which was a question that came in recently. So I thought that was worth making a video on. So that was pretty much what I had for you today. And with that said, I'll just catch you in the next one.